Pac-Man is a great package manager with a great set of supporting tools. And one such tool, or better yet, a collection of tools, is Pac-Man Contrib. This is a set of user scripts to ease the use of Pac-Man and make it more powerful in certain ways. Now, at one point, Pac-Man Contrib was actually a part of the Pac-Man package. But due to the eternal wisdom of the arch devs, they decide to split it out into two separate packages. Now we have the Pac-Man package and Pac-Man Contrib. There's a couple of other scripts in the package, but as of today, there are eight scripts and one C program, which I consider really, really useful. So due to it being the old one out and kind of the coolest one as well, we'll start off with the C program, this being Pac-Tree. Pac-Tree is basically a way to view the dependencies for a package but in a tree diagram, a tree visualization. Let's say for something like Alacrity. So this isn't just going to show the dependencies for Alacrity, it's also going to show the dependencies for the dependency as well, going all the way down the dependency tree. Now, because it's going all the way down the tree, you're going to notice a lot of duplicates. For example, we have libx11, libx11, glibc, 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 glibc. There's probably a bunch of others in here as well. Glib2, glib2. And this makes sense because a lot of these very low-level packages are going to be the dependencies for a lot of other applications. But if you want to get rid of the duplicates and just see everything you need to install to make sure Alacrity is going to be installed, pass in the dash U option and you're just going to get this list. This list has no duplicates, it's just every single package you need to make sure you can install Alacrity. One really useful way to use this though is with the dash R option. So right now this is showing the dependencies for Alacrity itself. If we pass in the dash R option, this is going to show everything that depends on this application. Obviously, Alacrity being a bad example for this, so let's try it out with something like, you know, glib2. So glib2-r, this is every application that is dependent on glib2, and then everything that is dependent on that. This tree is going to go as deep as it needs to go. But if you want to limit the tree depth, this can be done by passing in the dash D option, and in some cases for glib2 and things like that, maybe that is something you want to do. So if I go and pass in two to this, it is only going to be a tree of two depth. Now onto the scripts. Sometimes you want to check if there are updates available in Pac-Man, but you don't actually want to install them. This can be done with the check update script. And one thing you'll notice is every single update is on its own individual line. So if you want to know how many updates are available, all you would do is pass this into something like wc-l and there you go, 73 updates are available, and you can chuck that in like a notification or something like that. But sometimes you also might want to download the updates as well, but not install them. This can be done by passing in the dash D option. Now, obviously, because we are downloading packages, even if not installing them, this does need to be done by giving it pseudo privileges. But the option is there if you want to use it. Let's say you have a cron job that runs every six hours that downloads the updates for you. Another thing you have to deal with is your package cache. Every time you install a new package or you upgrade a package, there's going to be a copy of that package left in that cache. And over time, that is going to build up and you're going to have a bunch of extra data on your system that you really don't need to be there. It's certainly useful for reinstalling stuff, but when you're not using that cache, obviously you don't want it to be there. So the pack cache script is going to give us a lot of control over what is going to be removed. Now, if we just run pack cache by itself, it's not really going to do much because we need to put it into a mode. It can be in either dash M mode and then pass in a directory. This is move mode. This is going to move the cache into a separate location. We have the dash R mode. This is going to remove the cache. And then the dash D mode. This is for dry run. This is for testing things out just to see what's going to be removed without actually deleting anything. I'm going to run it in the dry run mode just so we can easily test stuff. So pack cache by itself. This is going to clear out the entire cache. The dash U option is only going to delete things that are also uninstalled. In this case, there's only two packages. The dash I option is going to accept a list of packages and those packages will be ignored. So let's say I had uninstalled, let's say Alacrity, for example. If that was in my cache, then everything else will be deleted except for that package. The dash K option is really interesting. So with your cache, you're going to have multiple versions of the exact same package. So this option basically determines how many versions you're going to keep. 
So this defaults to three, but let's say I want to keep five. So this is going to have a maximum of five versions for every single package. It doesn't mean that everything is going to have five, but anything more than five is going to be deleted. There is also a dash dash min dash a time option, and this will delete any packages older than a certain date. Now, as for the date format, this is found in the info page. I know info pages, we never use those for date input formats. So there's a couple of different formats we can use. You can check them out for yourself, but one of the formats we can use is something like this. So we can say the 30th of April, 2022, and anything older than that will be deleted. In this case, everything's also gonna be deleted. But we weren't getting any information on what was being deleted. This can be done with the dash V, VV, and VVV options with the more number of Vs, meaning more data. So this just shows you the package list. With the two Vs, you get the package locations. And then with three Vs, we get all of the package versions and we see how they are grouped together. Next up, we have the pack diff command. This is for performing a diff on your various pack new and pack save files. Basically, backup files created whenever you update or remove any packages. So when you run the command, you'll be presented with this interface. This lets you see what file you're up to. In this case, it's the Etsy shadow file, and then gives us some options on what we want to do. In this case, I'm going to view it, and it seems like there's nothing here. So I'm going to quit out of this, and let's go to the next file. Okay, there's one in Etsy local gen. Let's go and view this one. And we can just keep doing this for all of the files that are available. Now, one thing you might notice if you don't have Vim installed is it doesn't actually work because by default, the diff program is going to be Vim-D. So if you want to fix that, that can be done by setting an environment variable. That environment variable being the diff prog file. So inside of my zshemp, I've got this variable right here. In my case, I've set it to nvim-d, but any diff program is going to work. Next up, we have two scripts for doing a very similar task, pack list and pack log package list. So pack list is for seeing the packages that are available inside of a certain repo. So if I do pack list and then do the extra repo, we can see the packages that are available inside of that repo. The pack log package list command, this will let us see what packages are currently installed on my system. Now, certain packages you install are going to have various package actions or package hooks that are run to make sure the application is actually set up properly. Things like a pre-install script, a post-remove script, a pre-upgrade script, and things like that. For example, let's say grub to make sure the configs are actually being generated. So if we go and run the pack scripts command, this will let us see exactly what those scripts are. Let's do it for grub. And as we can see, there is a post upgrade and also a post install. Something you probably want to do is search for a package. This can be done with the pack search command. And this will accept some sort of string into it. Let's say I want to search for something like i3. And this is going to show every package that my Pac-Man knows is available that has i3 in its name or i3 somewhere in its description. And because it can be in its description, you'll see things that might seem a bit weird sometimes. So this can be addressed by instead of just passing in a string, passing in a regex instead. So I can have i3 at the start, and now anything that has i3 at the start of its name is going to show up. I would like a way to distinguish between the name and the description, but right now that isn't available. Tools like Reflector are great for generating a whole new mirror list. Maybe some of the mirrors are dead, or maybe they're just really, really out of date. But if you just want to take your existing mirror list or some mirror list file, and then reorder them in a way that is somewhat faster, this can be done with the rank mirrors command if I know how to spell. So we go and pass in my mirror list file, that being in slash etsy slash pacman.d and then slash mirror list is going to take that mirror list file and then basically just reorder it in just a moment. Maybe there is too many mirrors here though and you want to go and clear some of them out. This can be done by passing in the dash n option to limit the number that's going to be in the output. By default it's going to be everything but let's go and set it to four instead. Now it's just going to have a list of four mirrors. And if maybe you want to test a specific mirror, let's say this one right here, this can be done with the dash U option. Now make sure that when you do this, you go and put this inside of apostrophes because otherwise 
these two bits here are going to be interpreted as environment variables and it's not going to work. And that's the result we get. Now you don't need Pac-Man Contrib to do most of what is available here. A lot of this functionality is functionality built directly into Pac-Man. But a lot of it is behind really weird options and not really laid out in the most sensible way. And this just makes it considerably more convenient. So let me know what you think of Pac-Man Contrib in the comments down below. Is this a package you would ever go and use? If it is, what parts of Pac-Man Contrib seem useful to you? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to Donnie Barrow, pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and... I'm out.